Oh my gosh, so that was so cute. Honestly, I didn't really know what to expect because what you see on Instagram and social media, it's like, uh, it's so different. But it really is, you're just having dinner at a table and with the technology of 3D projection mapping, literally your table, your plate comes to life. And because it's mapping, you know, you should not move your plate whatsoever because it ruins the show. Because in a way, your plate is the palette for where the show is and it's just, um, yeah, it really is so cool. So the first thing, uh, there's actually a set menu. So you can either choose between classic, vegetarian, or kids. So obviously mine is the vegetarian. There's not a lot of difference between like at least the classic and the vegetarian, which I'm so grateful for. So this is the first one. So it's, it's, um, so it's like there's a show and then they serve your food. And then again, there's another show and then there's your food. So basically the whole meal has a storyline to it. And I believe every country has a different story. And in this case, here in Amsterdam, there are four petit chefs who are competing against one another. Japanese, Italian, I forget the other two, Spain and something else. And basically each chef prepares their own cuisine and uh, for you. So for the vegetarian, it is. I am having the first one, which is marinated tomatoes. This is from Spain. It has watermelon, manchego cheese, and croutons. So it's not vegan, it is vegetarian. So delicious. The tomatoes are so sublimely sweet, and then you get that like super sharp, salty saltiness from the manchego cheese and then you have a little bit of brightness from the microgreens and then a, an added crunch from the crouton so it is like a very texture explosion and different like sweet salty and then you have your watermelon that's just very very mild for for the ones that are classy it comes with i be i believe bacon so yeah, it really is nice. I mean, don't be deceived by the plate. It looks so simple and looks so basic, but no, the way this, this whole show is so thought about, I'm sure so is the food. And then the menu I got, each dish, yeah, each course, thank you, is actually served with wine. So you can choose between just having whatever drink you have, but I chose to do them with its own wine pairing. Nice. So, Luciano is getting the ingredients for truffle pasta. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. That is so lovely. Thank you, Jasper. Oh, it's so good. Look at this. So good. And the plate, it's like hot. Plate is hot. You've got like your greens, which I super love. There's the ravioli, a lot of sauce, truffle. Holy hot smokes. Okay, so it is basically like it has a lot of rocket rocket lettuce on top and it's got so much sauce and we like our ravioli or pasta and sauce, you know, swimming in sauce and you have like actual slivers of um, truffle. So even that here. Mm. It got in my pants. Such a waste not to eat it. <laughs> okay. There's actually pine nuts in it too. The sauce is just so bechamel y, like truffled, creamy sauce. But then because it can get too rich, you have like the bitterness from the rocket leaves and also that freshness. And then, of course, I mean, honestly, for me, I don't think truffles really like, look at this truffles they don't actually taste like anything it's more of like the smell i think it's like the smell when you actually like eat 
eat your dish it has that really like umami distinct flavor but the smell of truffle that you can like really taste and like the sauce is just wow you know i had very low expectations about the food because it was more about like the show but the food is actually quite delicious so our main course at least well for the rest uh for the classic it's steak i'm having dry aged beetroot not gonna lie beets are not my favorite <laughs> they kind of taste like dirt <laughs> La Sashang, Lupa. Um, but you know what um, I haven't been uh, I've loved the food so far so I wonder how they're going to try and pull this off because obviously the reason why they also use beetroot is because they wanted to replicate that idea of a meaty steak <laughs> your dry aged beetroot so take a look at this we got to do a side by side of the beetroot with the actual steak that's amazing thank you look at this can i borrow this for a second i just want to show you guys this is beetroot this is steak look how similar they look they even made the shape so similar okay i'm so sorry okay so the similarity is that it has the bernay sauce so the bernay sauce and you know the way that they cut the beetroot it kind of looks like a tenderloin steak and then if you're here in amsterdam nearly everything is served with potatoes unlike filipinos it's usually rice but yeah fry is incredible okay let's take one bite so let's look at the inside. Oh, it's a bloody steak. <laughs> Incredible. Okay, so let's try it with some Bernay sauce. Mm. It's so sweet. The beetroot is so sweet. And usually beetroot has a little bit of like earthy muddy taste to it it's so subtle and it's at the very end if anything the bernay sauce i guess like overthrows it oh my god it is lovely and then the texture of course it's not like that like chew of a steak of meat although it still has some chew to it it's um it's almost like a very rare rare like something absolutely sublime very good you know what i'm loving about this meal it's well one the food is actually quite good and then of course like the show is amazing but what i really appreciate is that you know nowadays i get it we're on our phones while we're having dinner but like you're like you're I'm so, pre like for me, like I'm so present. And usually when we have our meals, we're always like, we're at the table, but our mind is like elsewhere. And we're just like an autopilot mode. And it's so nice that the food like tastes better. The experience is so much like sharing a meal or even if you're just eating by yourself. It's so special because you pay attention to every detail, to every bite, to every aspect that's laid out on the table for you. 
And um, so if you think about it, the food so far has been actually quite simple. Even the menu is very deceivingly like this piece of paper. It's so simple. So you kind of like thinking, really, that's it. So you're thinking, oh, okay, it's more like the show and not about the food. But so far, it's been lovely. And um, yeah, I think it's a mixture of just being present and the food and the show. Amazing. <laughs> Okay, so the final dish is from Japan, uh, Chef Takahiro. It's a calamansi swirl, vanilla biscuit, calamansi coolie, and namal namaleka chocolate. Okay, babe, for the record, calamansi is actually native to the Philippines, and not to take away from Le Petit Chef, but I have to say this like Philippines is representing in this meal. Um, so let's give it a try. Mm. There's like a bitterness from the chocolate. And then there's a crunch from like, there's a crunch, just like a Rice crispy aspect. And then you have like also sweetness from the ganache. And then you have like some softness from the sponge cake. And then you have this burst of tanginess from the calamansi. It's like, girl, wow, that's amazing. It is, um, it's like bite after bite after bite. I can actually still taste it in my mouth and it gets like bitter and bitter and then all of a sudden as you're swallowing, I know as, as gross as it sounds, as I'm swallowing my saliva, there's like you can taste like the chocolate. Wow, that's amazing. It's actually super cool because apart from the music in our final, like our last course is a Japanese dessert or a Japanese rendition of our dessert. The music in the background is also Japanese. So it really is just auditory, um, you know, what you hear and then what you're tasting. It's like visually every single factor was really taken into account from the colors to the taste to the sounds to the ambiance to the servers. Wow, really, although it was le petit, it was definitely, this experience has been le grand. So that was le petit chefs in Amsterdam. <laughs>